I want to talk about um, what it is like to respond to the Lord in the right manner. Um, If you could open the Word of God to Mark 14. And really, the overall theme of my message is very, very simple, and it's summed up in one little thing, which is basically responding to the Lord when we sense His presence and how beautiful of a gift that is. And as we read this passage it really shows the heart posture that we can have at different times in our walk with the Lord. One, when we just feel so close and intimate with the Lord that we sense Him everywhere, we see Him everywhere, we just want to tell everyone about Him. And there's just this this longing for Him everywhere we go, no matter what distractions, no matter what is happening, He's on our minds, He's very present. And then there's other times in our walk where It's almost like familiarity to his presence blinds us. And we just, we're living the Christian life. We're not necessarily outright sinning, but we're not necessarily so in awe of his presence like we used to be. And it's almost like that sensitivity to him is no longer there. And so let's jump to Mark 14, verse 1. It says, After two days it was the Passover and the Feast of the Unleavened Bread. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by trickery and put him to death. But they said, Not during the feast, lest lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman and this is speaking of Jesus, a woman came having an alabaster flask, a very costly oil of spikenard. Then she broke the flask and poured it on his head. But there were some who were very indignant among themselves and said, why was this fragrant oil wasted? For it might have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they criticized her sharply. And Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a good work for me. For you will have the poor with you always. And whenever you wish, you may do them good. But me, you do not always. She has done what she could. She has come beforehand to anoint my body for burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, What this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. In this story, we see that the apostles or the disciples were in this room, right? And because we know the story, we know that they were lovers of Jesus. We know that at one point the Lord had called them and they had a decision to respond to the Lord and they did. They took a leap of faith. They left what they were doing in their everyday lives and they made a commitment in that moment to follow Jesus. And so now in the story, they're sitting here and they're in this room where they are now just relaxing. They're about to have a dinner probably. They're eating, they're mingling with the Lord. And this whole time, they have gotten to know the Lord. They've gotten to see how he talks to people, how he responds, his character. They've gotten to see him do miracles in other people's lives. And so they've gotten accustomed to what it's like walking him. And then this is a very casual moment. Nothing extraordinary is happening. They're just sitting, they're relaxing, they're having a normal time as they probably unwind before they start another big day. And we see that it's clear that when this woman cracks the door open to come into the house and she does what she does to the Lord, it was clear that this was an abrupt thing and that this was unannounced, that she wasn't just saying, oh, um, hey, so this is what I'm thinking of doing because their response to her breaking the, the fragrance over Jesus' head demonstrates that they clearly were in shock that she had done this. It 
And what was really surprising to me was the response that they had. Because if we really think about it, wasn't her response the most normal one? Someone who was willing to give everything for Jesus. And in other portions of scripture, it says that what she gave was a year's worth of salary. In that moment, she just, she just gave it to the Lord, poured it over. And so they were like, why is she doing this? Doesn't she understand that she can do way more with that? But it was almost like they were blinded to the fact that he was worth way more than that fragrance ever was. And they were missing that. But on the other side, we see her heart. And whether this is Mary or whether this is not Mary, um, because there's a little bit of different people saying different things, but whether this was Mary or not, the Bible says that this woman decided to go that route and to pour that fragrance, that oil upon Jesus' head. And it gets me to wonder what must have happened to her heart. How was she seeing the Lord so differently in the same moment that she decided that it didn't matter what thoughts she was having of like, oh my gosh, you're crazy. People are going to think weird of you. You're just coming into this house unannounced and you're going to do this. Like all the fears, she conquered them because somehow Jesus was more worth it than giving up this. And it's in this very, very simple story that these two things were highlighted to me. And I got to thinking how there are moments in time in our life where the Lord draws us, where the Lord pulls on our heart, whether it's in the car and you're driving alone or maybe you're having a conversation with a friend or maybe you're coming even on Sunday service in worship. And the Lord's drawing your heart, calling you. And so many times out of fear and security or just the lack of awareness that it's actually Him drawing us, we kind of just let the moment pass by, almost like we, we just push it aside. We don't give it much thought. And we don't go down that journey with the Lord. And the Lord has a way of dealing with each of us in our hearts and things that have a greater place in our heart than they should. And for me, I remember it was, and it's something that the Lord is still chiseling away at my heart. It's the opinion of other people. And I'm sure many of you can relate. So and not too long ago, I remember I was um, in the kitchen and my husband was in the back of the house in his office on his computer. And I was in the kitchen washing dishes. And all of a sudden I sensed the Lord's presence very, very beautifully. And I remember that I just began to think of all the good things that the Lord has brought me through, how he's been there and his hand and everything. And tears began to fill my eyes. And I was just thanking him and talking to him as I was doing the dishes. And all of a sudden I hear my husband get up from his desk because his door was open. And he's coming down the hall and I hear his footsteps. And in that moment, almost like an immediate reaction, I like, I suck it all up. I like, act like I was never even in that place with the Lord. And I'm like, okay, okay. And I don't know why I'm acting like this. I just am naturally. And all of a sudden, he comes in. He's in a completely different headspace, just like doing his little matcha. And I'm like, I'm like, okay, what do you want for dinner? And we just go down a completely different route. I never thought of it twice until a couple days later, the Lord really highlights that moment to me while I was in prayer. He brings that to my mind. 
And I really sensed him put on my heart and almost correct me and say, when was your husband's presence more valuable than mine? And I just remember I began to weep. I began to weep because he kept saying like, I sensed him say, aren't I more worth it in that moment? Who cares if your husband's coming, you know? It's not like my husband was going to judge me. He's, he always encourages that. But there was something in my heart that in that moment valued other people's opinions, even if it was my husband's above the Lord's presence. And there was such a holy conviction in that moment. And I began to weep for the Lord and repent and say, Lord, I'm so sorry because I don't understand where in the timeline of the last couple of months I've allowed other people's opinions to become larger than yours in the eyes of my heart. When did that happen? When did I become numb to the reality that the God of the entire universe in that very moment is trying to make himself known to me? And it was just like, as the time went by, the Lord continued to make this more and more real to me, almost like removing layers off of my understanding so that I can truly see what a privilege it is to be known by God and to have the presence of the very living God with us. It reminds me of something that I read uh, about Celtic Christians in the 15th century when Christianity began to flourish in the British Isles. They had a belief that thin places existed. And perhaps many of you know the term, but they believed in thin places, which means that there were certain places where it was almost like the layer between the supernatural and the natural became so thin almost transparent. And that's what happens. That's truly what's a perfect description of what's happening when we are gathering together in the house of God to worship the Lord. It's a, it's a thin place because the presence of the Almighty God can come and encounter every individual because that's who he is. And it's his presence that we're made for. It's him that we're made for. It's knowing him that should be our pursuit. And it was that ordinary moment in my kitchen that became such a thin place for me. And I began to see different areas of my life where I had been just stubborn or just unwilling to give in. It was like I had a replay, not just was it in that moment in the kitchen, but there were other instances when I was having a conversation with a friend and we were talking about the Lord and I sensed him and instead of giving in to the Lord, instead of together going to a deeper place in his presence, I resisted or in the car or even at worship because I was scared of what other people might think if my response is not like somebody else's response. And so it's almost like I withhold from the Lord when he wants everything. It's all he's ever wanted. And it doesn't matter if your worship or if your response to the Lord looks different than anybody else's because that was never the plan, the intention. It's whatever you have to offer him that he's looking for. And sometimes all you can offer is just your hands up. Sometimes all you can offer is a tear coming down the face. 
Sometimes all you can offer, sometimes your heart's filled with joy and you're just singing praises to the Lord. You're, you're hugging people and that's your response in that moment to the Lord and that's okay. It doesn't have to look like somebody else's response. It just has to be everything that you have. In that moment, when his presence becomes real, when his presence is becoming more real to you, how do you respond? And it's as simple as that. We see in Acts that the apostles' hearts had been so captivated by the Lord. Something had happened to them so deeply that the Bible says in Acts that they rejoiced, that they were worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. Because surrender suddenly becomes so easy when we see the value of Jesus in comparison to the rest. Surrender in every area of our lives, no matter what he's calling us to, no matter what is ahead, yes is easy. Surrender is easy because we see the Lord. More than anything, if there's one thing that you take from the sermon, let it be to not forget the privilege that it is to be children of God the privilege it is to have the presence of the living God everywhere with us in everyday moments, but also the awareness in specific moments of our lives. And that's what, that's what this gathering is meant to be like, a thin place for hurting and broken people all over to come and experience a living God that he would dwell here among his children. Would you close your eyes with me? Whether you would like to stand or remain seated, I want us to go to a place together where we offer the Lord something tonight or this morning. Where we truly offer something that only you can offer the Lord. That's what this beautiful day is about. The gathering of the saints is to worship him. Not just the worship team singing songs and you singing along, but no, there is an oil that only you can offer the Lord. And this morning he's searching for that. He's desiring that. Because so many times and so much of our life is spent asking the Lord and seeing him do good things for us. But we do have the privilege to offer the Lord our praise and our worship, something that only we could offer him. And the gathering of the saints, like this Sunday, every Sunday, is that opportunity to come before the Lord to offer him something that only he deserves. So I want to encourage you today right where you are. Let his presence become real to you again. Would you just begin to respond to the Lord however you feel on your heart? Let us together as his children respond to him. However you feel, Come on, would you just come with me to this place? As his children, Lord, we see you today. Oh, we see you, Jesus. We see you, Jesus. 
We see you, Lord. We see you. We see you. We see you today. Lord, and we respond to you this morning. We love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. There's only, there's oil that only you can give, that only you can offer. That's what he's looking for. It's your heart. It's your response. We love you, Jesus.